on the uh, front end of the machine we're going to remove our proximity uh, probe bracket for the uh, back drive pinion speed shaft and then we're going to loosen our coupling up you can get this over here there's an allen screw in the in the coupling we're going to back that screw off and slide that coupling half back out of the way and then the only thing left on the machine would be to remove the, the pillar block bolts and uh, loosen up our front hub and then we'd be ready to lift out after we pull the feet to it. Okay. Yes. We just removed the dowel pin from the pillow block bearing. Uh, I want to show you one thing about the dowel pin. It's, uh, there's a top and a bottom for the sleeve. Uh, if you try to set the pin in this way, it won't go. If you drop the pin in that way, it drops right down in there. The pin is tapered. The sleeve is straight on the OD, tapered on the ID. The lip is for the tool to grab a hold of, to pull out. So be sure when you put the sleeve back in that you install with the lip down. That way the dowel pin will slide in. Uh, we line the pillow block bearing up with the hole, we tap the sleeve down in there, we get all four sleeves started, and then we drop our pins in and lightly uh, seat them with a hammer. If you let the hammer do the work, get your little ball peen hammer, uh, just let the hammer do the work, you'll hear the tap, 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 and it'll get solid, and you know you're hard enough. You don't need to beat these things to the, to the end to get them in. They uh, just need to be snug. Well, it's not, for a long time, they were kind of mixed on these things, whether the, all the external bolts I know these were 17s and I know the covers were 19s and that's why the 7 16ths I mean 11 16ths fits 17 is the same thing I've already taken all these set screws out of each machine and lubricated them with uh, with some pluber on uh, all the set screws for the coupling so you don't have to worry about the shafts are lubricated the pins are lubricated uh, I've pretty much lubricated everything. These couplings weren't on whenever I got here, so they had to be assembled. So everything should be pretty well lubricated up. Let's see if we can make this slide. Just using this wrench here. You definitely want to keep your pins lubricated, uh, keep the coupling as lubricated as you can so it has room to float. This machine will grow axially as it heats up and it's stationary on that end and this end floats. I've used the crane to let this down easy so we don't just drop it on that. If you let it down easy it's okay, it's rubber. It's got enough flex where it drops down. We'll break this loose here with a couple of crescent wrenches. Just hold this one back up and break here. Remove the feed, feed tube bolts. And this is the plant that I've removed the gas. So four bolts here, eight bolts here, one fitting there, and the feed tube should slide out. So let's put that choker down. These are the plates used to adjust the pond depth. Held on by four Allen bolts. Plates can be removed and replaced with a different size to adjust the pond depth. It takes about a half an hour to do all of them. Screw here, okay? And when you're running the feed, it's just straight through this fiberglass tube all the way out to the end here, okay? Now you see these holes around this tube, there's an O-ring right here on the, on the inside. There's an O-ring here, and there's an O-ring on the face down on this end. So I'll pop that out.
So here's your tube within the tube. And you have a, a fit for your O-ring. And your other O-ring on this end is face mounted. And, uh, if you look at this end here, you got the O-ring here. Okay, so you got to make sure you have both the O-rings or this thing will rattle around in there. You don't want that. So put your both, both the O-rings on there, lubricate them up. And just slide this thing in here. That end down there is tapered, so it doesn't take a whole lot to get it going in this right on in there. Okay, now your polymer comes in here, it goes around that fiberglass tube and comes out these holes here for what we call internal polymer injection. Okay, now they also have this manifold on your feed tube, your feed line, that they can inject polymer there and send it through the feed tube with the process. Okay, so it's called uh, internal polymer injection feed zone uh, to tube within a tube. Uh, I think we can lay this here, across these, or what we can put it in this green tray here. So now I'm just going to get it out of the way. We, want, we don't want to set it on that tip. So what are we removing? Pillar block bearing uh, bolts, hold down bolts. Normal torque is what? 490 if I'm not mistaken. 490 foot pounds. Listed in the book is inch pounds, and you have to divide inch pounds by 12 and give you foot pounds. Somebody's going to get the book that has that in it already because I filled them in for them. Oh, <laughs> but that's one of the questions on the test. How do you convert inch pounds to foot pounds? Test? Nobody said anything about a test. Let's see who wins. Whoever gets the book with an answer in it, that's the winner. <laughs> Oh, I was looking at the book the other day, and for my own personal knowledge, I did the calculations and wrote it in there. If everybody wants to write it in the book when we're going through training, that's fine. Uh, when we talk about torquing bolts uh, on alpha valve machinery, everything is lubricated bolts. So never seize or Kluber, whatever the equivalent is that you would use. Uh, all the torque specs that you'll see in alpha valve's book that's dedicated to this centrifuge is lubricated bolts. Uh, we don't dry torque anything. Everything is never seize or Kluber, which is, a, I guess, the Denmark's equivalent to never seize. So, all lubricated. Two here and two down there. Look back. Okay. Earlier I mentioned about uh, prior to pulling the rotating assembly, uh, breaking loose the uh, the hub bolts. I'm going to go ahead and break as well as the gearbox bolts. So. We don't have to fight it down on the floor. Uh, if we had the bowl dolly, this is no problem on the floor, but since we don't have the bowl dolly here, uh, I'm gonna bust everything loose up here. It makes it a little bit easier for me down there. So just, to, just gotta give it a, let it roll one direction and then yeah. pop it back the other way. And we'll just go around this one at a time. And, uh, we'll do that for the gearbox and the hubs. That's good. I only left one down below. You need to uh, put a strap on this? No, nope, this is going to come off when we get it on the ground. I'm just getting all the bolts out now, so it's oh, okay. easy to do it while you can turn right. it. And we're working on top instead of the bottom. That'd be kind of hard to... Found my steady, huh? <laughs> yeah. There's another one right there. That's how These gloves are working so well. So you only want to leave two? I'm going to leave two bolts. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to drop these in here. Yep. Yeah. Are they the same size bolts? No. All interchangeable? Different bolts. Nope, just about every bolt on the machine is different, except for some earlier, these cover bolts, inboard and outboard. Sometimes I see longer ones on one side than the other, but really the only bolts that are the same on the whole machine 
are your inboard and outboard covers on both ends. Everything else, the hub bolts on the other end are different. The gearbox bolts are different. All the internal bolts are different. Uh, it's uh, pretty well planned out. You can't get mixed up. It goes one way. One way it goes together. Down. Put our V mark. I put that in there with my pen a minute ago. So we got to have some uh, marks on there so we go back to the same place. We want to go back to the same place for balance purposes. This may be dialed, that may be why they quit putting the V on it. I don't know if this one's dialed or not, but we're not going to take any chances of it not being, but that might be why they didn't put the V mark. But I always park a jack bolt hole straight up and down. In the event, you can take this hub and gearbox off all as an assembly, but it's real hard to get the shaft back in. You got to have everything perfect. It can be done, but it's harder. I always just take the gearbox off and then you can put it on afterwards. Park the jack bolt to the top in the event that you did take the hub off as an assembly with the gearbox on it. You could use this hole instead of pull the Allen plug out, the Allen out of there that's in the hole, take it out and thread an eye bolt in there. And now you got a lifting point that's the center. Okay, so when we pull, if we lift it up right here and this is to the top, we set it down, this will be on the top, and that just kind of makes it easier. You gotta be very careful when you want it dead center when you lift it up, pick it up and it's crooked. Full of water, all that water goes to one end, it's going to make it worse. Make sure you let it get away from it.
ball buried in there. Let's see if those other bolts are buried any further. Yeah, there should be Allen, blood, Allen screws in each one of these holes for uh, to jack this box off here. Gearbox. Well, we've removed the rotating assembly from the frame, got it down here on the floor. Uh, we've removed the gearbox from the other end of the machine. Prior to dropping the hub on that end, there is a pulley bearing inside this cover right here. And we have the tension bar nut that has to be taken off prior to dropping the conveyor. If we pull the hub off of the end down there prior to pulling the bearing out of here, we drop the conveyor inside the bowl shell and it wedges this cup and cone bearing into a bind it's real hard to get out. So rather than dropping the hub first, we've got, we still have the conveyor suspended between its bearings and uh, free to turn. And we should go ahead and remove our tension bar nut and our, our uh, pulley bearing. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to remove, I believe there's six Allen screws. There should be one on top, another one on bottom. Uh, to remove the six screws, then we use the hammer and the tension bar nut wrench to remove the tension bar nut. And we pull the pulley cover and pull the bearing out. Then we can remove the, buff, the hub from the other end and extract the wire. Yeah. Cool. Basically, you know, it's a rotating assembly inside a rotating assembly here. And that's, uh, that gearbox is what's driving, the gearbox down there is driving that conveyor. So we'll go ahead and see if we can uh, pound this loosely. This pretty wrench ain't going to be pretty when we get done. Hold that down on there and off.
that he has. That's a cake discharge down here. Center.